One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, unless I say otherwise, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm here. I'm going to take two tweets and then I'm going to riff on them, giving a couple of thoughts each on how to apply those tweets to your everyday life. And then on Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern time, the revolution will be live streamed. That is Kamau and myself and usually a special guest talking about what's going on and how to bring big ideas to bear on everyday experiences. Today's topic is navigating negative emotions and facing the blank page. Let's dive right, right in with the first tweet. All right. Don't make a God out of positive emotions. Pursue and practice what you love, but don't confuse love with always feeling cozy, comfortable, and cheerful. All right, uh, so much to say on this topic here, but let me give a shout out to a couple of comments that I thought were right on point to kind of build on this thought. Um, someone says, exactly, for far too long, we have mistaken temporary happiness or pleasure as fulfillment. I would say that goes hand in hand with rising depression rates as people are taught that unless they are happy, the world is conspiring against them. You know, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you have said things like, well, I thought I loved that person, but the other day we got into a stupid argument about something small, so I must not love them, right? Because people who really love each other would never do that, right? Or you think to yourself, well, I, I thought I loved writing, I thought I loved music, but some days I don't feel motivated to do those things at all. So I must not love it, right? And we have this idea that if we're not happy all the time, if we're not cheerful all the time, well, we must be doing something wrong. Reality must not be working for us. And that just doubles your trouble. You know, it's one thing to feel bad. It's another thing to feel bad about feeling bad. It's one thing to feel bad. It's another thing to feel like feeling bad makes you some kind of sinner. But what if we looked at our so-called negative emotions like they were the seasons? You know, when you wake up, maybe you're wishing for a sunny day and it's raining and you were hoping to maybe go for a bike ride or go for a picnic, go play some basketball, but it's raining and you can't do any of those things. That's okay to be frustrated about that. That's okay to be sad about that, but that's no reflection on you. The fact that it's raining doesn't mean you screwed up or the universe is punishing you in some kind of way. It just means there's some stuff that happens that causes it to rain. And it's the same way. You feel all kinds of things in the course of life. You have sunny days, you have wintry days where it snows, you have rainy days, you have cold days, you have days where it's nice, you have days where it's too hot and you just wanna stay inside under a fan or an air conditioning. It's the same way with emotions. You have all kinds of days and sometimes it just means nothing at all. Sometimes it means maybe you need a nap. Maybe you need something to eat, right? Maybe you need a break. Maybe you need to talk to someone. Maybe you just need to keep doing what you're doing and stop micromanaging your emotions. Whatever the case may be, here's the most important thing I want you to take away. There is a difference between doing what you love and always feeling good. And those two things never come together because no matter who or what you love, there will always be aspects to doing what you love, to pursuing what you love that will feel inconvenient or uncomfortable because that's a part of life. Doing the things that we love, being with the people that we love involves commitments and compromises that sometimes don't feel cheerful and jovial. And if you walk around feeling like, well, I, well, I, I, I got to be, you know, uh, happy all the time. Well, then you're just going to get in your head in all kinds of ways, start micromanaging every little feeling that you have and psych yourself out. It reminds me, I used to work at a restaurant and my manager was always all about the smiles, right? Smile. My manager ever caught you not smiling? Where's that smile? And so all the servers were walking around all the time like, hello, hello, hello. And, and sometimes you were stressed out. You were overwhelmed. You were really busy, but you knew how to keep that smile on. Hi, my name is TK. I'm here to take care of you today. And some of us walk around life like that. We walk around life like we're on shift, working at a restaurant, serving customers. And no matter how we feel, no matter what's going on inside, we feel like we got to be smiling. 
And if we aren't smiling or feeling like we want to smile, we feel like we're failing. Well, guess what? You're not failing. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. It's okay to feel annoyed sometimes. It's okay to feel irritated sometimes. Doesn't mean anything is wrong with you. And the sooner you can get that through your heart and your head, the sooner you can get on with the real work of not creating a happy lifestyle, but creating a lifestyle of emotional versatility, where you learn to work with all the different feelings that you have, and where you learn that as long as you are harnessing those feelings as energy and directing them in a constructive and creative way, it's all good, even if it doesn't feel good. Hey, shout out to, um, uh, I, I can't see the uh, the name of the comment, but shout out for the comment. Uh, and, and, and I always love when you guys ask questions, or even if you disagree, I cover it all here. So feel free to comment or ask questions about anything that you want me to cover. Let's go to tweet number two. Before we do, remember, if you're just tuning in, every Tuesday and Thursday, TK's Two Cents, where I take two tweets, give a couple of thoughts about each. And uh, on Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern time, it's Kamau and I, The Revolution will be live streamed where we have a special guest talking about what's going on in the world, talking about other people's story and the lessons you can learn from them. All right, this one is about the blank page, the scary blank page. The blank page is like a mirror that reflects back to you what your interior life looks like. If you're not studying, meditating, playing around with new ideas, or being inspired by other people's creative work, all of this will be made plain to you when you sit down to write. So if you're not a writer, hang tight, stay tuned, because this applies to so much in life. But just a quick little word about writing. I did a blogging experiment several years ago where I said, I'm going to show up and write something every single day. And that was really tough to do. No matter what your mood is, no matter what's going on in your life, to make yourself face that blank page and write something. But there was something about facing the blank page that really revealed myself to me. It helped me understand my own practices for cultivating interior richness. And I, and, I, and I came to realize that the more time I spend investing in things like reading books, listening to good music, having good conversation, exposing myself to new kinds of experiences, the easier it is for me to write. Inspiration is this thing that we often search for, you know, the magic bullet. You know, we, we search for the magic bullet when it comes to inspiration. What's that thing that I can do that will make me always feel inspired? But inspiration, just like anything else, is an investment. Your output is determined by your input. You don't get inspired through willpower. You get inspired by feeding yourself the kinds of things that cause creative action and motivated energy to well up from the inside out. Just like when you, you plant seeds, you get crops. You don't get crops if you don't plant the seeds, right? You, don't, you can't walk around and say, Hi, can I, how, how can I get crops if you're not willing to plant the seeds? I just spoke to a group of, of high school students a couple of weeks ago, and the main question they were asking was, how do I inspire myself? How do I inspire myself? How do I get inspired? And, and there's a lot of people that's kind of struggling with this. How do I stay motivated? And the way I look at this, whether it's you want to feel inspired to, to write, to actually do the thing, or you just want to have good ideas for when you do sit down to write, or anything else, building businesses, creating art, whatever it may be, the best way to stay inspired is to adopt consistent daily rituals of nourishing your soul with something that challenges you to think more critically and creatively. Let me give you an analogy. Let's take things like taking a shower and brushing your teeth. How often do you do it? As often as possible, right? You do it every day, right? You never allow yourself to say things like, oh yeah, brush my teeth, I did that last month. Take a shower, I did that last year. I did that back when I was in high school. No, you do it every day, right? And you understand that if you miss two days, you're probably going to stink. So you can't afford to miss too many days of that. You just show up and do it every day even if it doesn't feel like it's the most important thing. Even if you have a lot of other things to do and you're in a rush to get to work, you make time for that. It's the same thing with motivation. When, you know, like, and, and, and nowadays it, it's, it's so freaking easy. I mean, the, the family I grew up in, you know, my mom just made us read the Bible every day for 15 minutes and we were always taking in something good. But nowadays you've got books that are designed where it's like every calendar day of the year, 
here's a, a motivational story, or here's a success story, or here's some leadership insight that goes along with the day. And you can read things like that. You can go on YouTube and you can type in motivational video and you can pick up a five to 10 minute video and you can watch that. And here's the thing, by the way, this isn't for the person who's like, well, I'm a really tough, super duper business guy and I work 70 hours a week and I never feel unmotivated. I don't need this kind of stuff. It's not for you, for the people that are asking, for the people that struggle with being motivated and inspired. It's for the people that actually ask the question. For y'all, take that five to 10 minutes and take it in and don't even expect it to work right now. It, it, it's sort of like if you've been unhealthy all your life and, and you eat a plate of vegetables, you're not just gonna become physically fit right then and there. You're not just gonna become healthy right then and there. You're investing in the process, right? Show up and do it today. It's not gonna feel good. It's not gonna make you feel motivated. Show up and do it tomorrow and set aside five to 10 minutes every day to put something inside of yourself that takes you outside of your habitual thought patterns so that so that you're, you're making interesting connections and, and you're being inspired by other people's work and you give it time, you commit to that process, creative ideas will start coming out of you. You know, Stephen, uh, Stephen King said um, that you can't write if you refuse to read. And it's just like that with any aspect of creativity. If you wanna be creative, if you wanna be inspired with new ideas or inspired to just get after it and stay motivated with pursuing your dreams, then you've gotta ask yourself, what am I doing to invest in those feelings of inspiration? What am I feeding myself? In the same way that your body runs out of energy, if you starve it of food, your soul is gonna run out of inspiration and motivation if you starve it of good ideas. Feed yourself every day, take five to 10 minutes, just like you take the time to brush your teeth. Because if you don't do it, your ideas are gonna stink. Your motivation is gonna stink. All right, y'all, that's it. Peace.